What's going on, my hungry, hungry humans, and welcome back to the Hungry Road. Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate it. If you're first time seeing my face, please go ahead and smash the subscribe button, like the video while you're at it. But I'm still here in Chicago. It's my second week, and we have something very controversial here in front of us. So this is the 2020 Chevrolet Blazer RS. Now I've seen regular Blazers at rental car lots before, like the base model, the 2LT or the 3LT trims. But I want one that's been a little bit more optioned up, the RS or the Premier trim that has been optioned up. And I found one here at the Chicago O'Hare Airport. This car is from Michigan. I'm assuming it's from either Grand Rapids or DT DTW, but I'm glad it made it here. So there's a lot that I want to discuss here because this is a very controversial car. I already used that word, yes. But people were like, it should have been an off-roader. You know, GM had the chance to take over the industry with making this an off but I, no. Bro, ma'am, sis, guy, they, everything is changing. So look at the Acura Integra. Look at the Ford Mustang Mach-E. Look at the new <laughs> Acura NSX. Look at all these different vehicles that had a different past than what they have now. Things are changing. Things are moving forward. So I'm going to discuss why I actually really like this truck and that it should be what it is right now. You should go buy the Trailblazer if you wanted an off-road car. The Chevrolet Blazer of times past was a really big, brawny, gas guzzling, must off road sort of vehicle. It was like back when gas was cheap, back when you could just put, you know, 20 gallons of gas in it, it cost you 15 bucks to do that. It made more sense to have these big, giant, brawny vehicles you could just do whatever you want with, you know, and then you could take it out on the road and drive on home with it. But since then, the Blazer has lost weight. It's redesigned itself. It's went to a rehab center in Southern California, and now it's come back as a sports sedan. It's lighter, it's nimble, it's quick, and I love everything about it. Now, I really don't even want to discuss the 2LT and the 3LT trims because those are like the boring specs of the Blazer. Like, it, it they, they, I don't, think, I don't think they're worthy of the Blazer name. Like Blazer, like a street Blazer. You know, you're, bla you're blazing on the street. You know, you leave a trailer. 11s on the road like you know something fast like or like trailblazer like you're creating a new path that kind of thing but the uh, 2lt 3lt trims anyway i'm gonna stop harping on those but the rs is very sporty it's very aggressive it's got sharp lines it's edgy i very i like it a lot please pardon my squinting the sun's very very bright right now but i don't want to use sunglasses i want you to see my face when you hear what i have to say about this car okay let's move on to some of the other things you can get your blazer in one of six different colors. Now, three of them are gonna be free. The other three gonna cost you a little extra. You've seen this before. So the first choice there is gonna be hot red. It's like a very, very bright fire engine red. It's gonna draw some attention. I think it would look great with these upgraded. Well, these aren't the upgraded wheels. These are stock wheels for the RS trim because it's gonna be a good accent. The black wheels with the red paint, I think that's a really good idea. Or even the upgraded 21 inch wheels you can get for an extra thousand bucks. Those would be really, really nice. Your second choice is gonna be a silver metallic. It's very boring, it's very basic. Moving on. Your third choice is the black here. Now, not as boring, but when you get the blackout package where you can pluck out the emblems and the logos, as you can see on this car here, it kind of looks murdered out, murdered spec. You know, that's what they, that's what they call it. Criminal spec is what they call it. Shout out to F-Spot. Go watch this channel. And uh, it looks really good like this. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Now, we'll do the more expensive stuff. So your first color here is going to be nitro yellow metallic. I really like a yellow car. Like, you don't see yellow off, often at all. Yellow is beautiful. It's bright. It's bold. It's different. Now, the only thing about the yellow is it's another 400 bucks. And you have to buy this two-tone package. So they have to paint the whole car black first. Then they paint the middle section yellow. So that's going to be a total of about 950 bucks just to get the yellow paint. Could be worth it. I mean, if you're going to have the car for a long time, it's a drop in the bucket, to be honest. All right. Next color. This one's going to be called Cherry Red Tint Coat. A much deeper, richer red compared to the Fire Engine Hot Red that we talked about earlier. You're going to be able to see into the paint, see a little depth, a little 3D paint action, a little bit of flake in there. I think it'll look pretty nice. And last but not least, we have what's called Iridescent Pearl Tint Coat. This is a $995 option. Again, pearl. I'm sure we're going to see like a rainbow effect in the paint somewhere. And you also have to buy the two-tone paint option with this car. I'm not with this color. I'm not sure what the issue is, 
with not wanting to paint the whole car yellow or the whole car white but you so you got to pay <clears throat> the extra 550 for that dual dual tone sorry this is a case of crazy right now the dual tone paint job with the white and with the yellow but to each their own you do you boo boo all right let's go into the hood here for a second i'm gonna be honest with you uh for the amount of room in the engine bay compared to how much space this the bigger engine takes up it's very interesting there's a lot of space up here but maybe just like old cars there was a lot of room for you to work on your own car so maybe chevy is encouraging you to work on your own car or their direction or the dimension specifications made more sense to have more room in the front so quickly let's discuss the engine this doesn't have so the 2lt 3lt and the premier tr trims do come standing with a two liter four cylinder engine uh very small 228 horsepower 258 pound feet of torque nothing crazy you do get good gas mileage we 19 in the city and 27 on the highway now this one here this is the 3.6 liter v6 this makes 308 horsepower and about 270 foot pounds of torque much more power much more torque you definitely feel it all right let's discuss the front end here real quick don't you kind of see a little bit of camaro right here like from like the top top of the hood or the hood whatever you want to call it to like right about here all the way across the, the front end that's like camaro isn't it? it it's camaro don't don't worry about it but yes we have our running lights right here we do have our headlights right inside there as well they're very very sleek very very like small it's pretty pretty cool looking but down here we have our fog light our turn signal down here and we do have our tri-level grill one two three pulls in a lot of air and again this is usually like a yellow chevy badge but you can black this out with the blackout package very very cool but a very aggressive front a lot of sharp lines here a lot of sharp edges i really like that and like i said it like I said, it went to Southern California, it came back with an edge, it came back healthier and sharper and smarter. Man, it's, it's, this is a nice looking blade. You, you gotta give it some credit, man. I don't need all this to be off road. There's also an RS badge up here if you didn't know what you were driving. Now, one thing you're gonna notice that's missing is parking sensors, adaptive cruise control. These things aren't standard on a 2020 model year. On a 2022, 2023 and up model year, the front uh, collision pedestrian monitor, like it'll stop the car if you sense somebody in front of you or whatever. That's standard on 20, the, new, the newest model year, 22 and 23. Now, depth of cruise control is still an option on those, but it's not standard. I believe it might be standard on the Premier, but it's not standard on the 2LT, 3LT, or even the RS. All right, the back end is a little softer, in my opinion, than the front end was. And as you notice, we do have incandescent turn signals here. Come on, man. Just give me the LEDs. You threw the LED, like, running lights up front. At least give me some LED turn signals back here. Like, But anyway, on the 2022 model year, all that stuff's kind of standard. It, I, I just I can't stand it when they throw these little bulbs in here. We got parts left over. We got to use them up or something like that. Anyway. We do have a nice, decent back end here. I like how this is kind of like smooth sort of windshield wiper cover right there. It's not like an exposed wiper. It's the little things, the little details there. Again, this, remember the Malibu? I mentioned the Malibu, right? These look like the exact same running lights. A friend, a friend of mine, name is Alexis. She calls them as a phallic, phallic lights. I'll leave it to your imagination. It's actually pretty hilarious. Let's step a slide over here real quick. We do have a black bow tie right here, blacked out emblem down here. Whoever Burt Watson is, probably sold a bunch of these to National out there or Enterprise or whoever. But yeah, man, it's a decent looking back end. Uh, like I said, the license plate could be a little lower down here, but they do what they got to do. I love the diffuser acts. We got like some like, air control going on down here, hitch cover right there parking sensors we have our rs logo right here your trim level of course and you get to put the um the all-wheel drive probably would be right here my guess but yeah man it's a decent looking back end it actually looks a lot better from down here it looks a little more aggressive kind of see more of the lines right here i don't know i, I kind of like it all right we have the key to the chevrolet blazer here a little yellow logo on the back which we normally would look if you didn't get the black out package that blackens out that logo that logo there and the one on the back but back to the key we have a lock button in the top left corner unlock remote start you have, if you want to open the trunk you can press this button twice you have a panic button down here but for now let's remote start the car let's lock the car once and then hold down the remote start button all right that remote starts the car now keep the key in your pocket if you want to get into the vehicle we're going to approach the door handle right here see this little silver button so right now you can't open the door it's locked press the little silver button with the key in your pocket car unlocks and you can get in 
Now, one little thing, an option, this does not have all of the step rails. You can actually get these little rails you can put your foot on in order to help you get into the truck. I think it's like an $800 option. I'll, I'll put it down here in the bottom of the thing. But let's go ahead and get in the car now. All right, let's run through the inside a little bit here. The interior is pretty cool. It's pretty standard. It got some things I like, some things I don't like, of course. But it's a very standard interior. This is a Chevrolet. This is not Cadillac. This is not Buick. It's none of those higher-end brands. It's okay. Leather seats are standard. Got black leather. We have a nice little red piping in there. Gives a little edge. Red trim around the ventilation stuff over here. Red trim across the dash. I think it adds a little touch to it. Don't, don't you think? It's pretty good. We do have an 8-inch touchscreen right here. It's a little weird trying to touch some of the stuff on the bottom here because you have this little lip that kind of gets in the way. But it, it is what it is. <laughs> it works very well. Start-stop button is up here in the top right corner. Pretty standard. No big deal. Now, on the door over there, you have, well, on both, on, on both doors... You have like, uh, I've never seen it before. So you can put your arm, you know, hang out right here. Put your arm or whatever. But just below that, you have a place to put like business cards or your wallet or your keys or whatever. Like not way down here in the cup holder or whatever, but like mid mid level. Like I think that's really interesting. I had never seen that done before. I also really like this handle. Like you can grab this handle if you need to. You can grab the one up here if you're a passenger too. If you're a driver, you're dri you don't know what to do with yourself. You just pull out this little handle right here. I think it's a pretty cool touch as well. Steering wheel is pretty straightforward. There's nothing crazy. You do have your uh, heated steering wheel right here with the standard. One thing I don't like is to go through these menus back here on the dash. So you have the buttons that go left and right. But if you want to go up and down, you got to roll the wheel. So I, I, I try to you know press this when I really need to go down. You, know, you can kind of scroll through the different menus right here or whatever. There's nothing crazy in the man. I ain't going to go through the menus. But if you want to go left and right, you got to press the button. See, there's nothing to go left and right there. How about, no, not there. See, yeah. So now you can go left and right. Reset trip, reset trip, whatever. And, uh, but yeah, so it's kind of confusing to deal with all that. Phone call buttons right here. Now, where are your volume and your sort of track, track changing buttons? Those are on the back of the wheel. So if you kind of see my hand right here. We have our volume control right here. That's volume up, volume down. And on the other side of the wheel, you're going to have the same thing. That's going to be your track seeking. Nothing crazy, but I like the way to put on the back of the wheel. Like uh, a lot of Chrysler products do that as well. All right, here's your 8-inch touchscreen here. I'm not going to lie. Apple CarPlay has not been working very well for me. It could either be the system here or it could be the cord I've been using, but it is not very reliable at all. I can be mid-phone call and it'll switch over to my phone because it stopped. I don't know what I'm doing with that. Uh, we're gonna get, we're gonna get rid of this, but there's the home button right here, and go back. But yeah, pretty solid screen. Pretty, yeah, see, pretty smooth. Not bad at all. But it's a nice looking screen. And though it is kind of propped up here like this, it it still fits into the dash. Just like, why didn't y'all put it into the dash? Why didn't the dash come out like this and then wrap back around? I don't know. Can you swap screens out? Anyway, moving on. So this is all very familiar. Almost all the Chevrolets have their climate control set up just like this, especially the Camaro. So I'm wondering if this is actually the Malibu chassis this is built on or if it's the Camaro chassis, I'm wondering. But we did seat right here, uh, but we can also add AC seats. Now, if you wanna add AC seats, it's gonna be a package you have to add. And you can't just add the AC seats, you gotta add the entire package. It's what people are doing these days. So anyway, it's called the Enhanced Convenience Package. You can add air conditioned seats, a Bose sound system, memory seats, power steering wheel, and read it, rear heated seats at $1,660. If you want it, go for it. But I think for the sound system and the AC seats alone are worth that price. Let's move on. We have our directionals, our direction controls right here. Turn the climate control off. This is all standard stuff. You want to change your fan speed is right there in the middle. We have our vents, so the left side here, that's for you. So if you look here, you can change your temperature. And the right side here, you can change their temperature. See the temperature changing right there? Nothing crazy, not bad. We have an ancient gear shifter right here. You put your foot on the thing, just standard. You know, it makes a nice clinking noise and put it in low right there if you want to. Now there's no real manual shifting in here, but it's an RS sport mode. I don't really get that. Speaking of sport mode, we do have it back here. This is your parking brake. We do have your normal driving, snow driving, and race. So we can kind of turn it to race. There we go, do it again. 
and we have a race and now it says sport oh, sorry sport mode is on up oh, too blurry to see doesn't matter it'll stiffen the car up make it a little better but we do have cup holders right here sorry about my chapstick nothing crazy man just a very standard sort of car you know that's built on the malibu and god he built on the malibu chassis all right i did forget to mention usb-c and usb-a ports here very futuristic or future proofing the ride here now let's look inside the armrest pretty deep storage in there we do have another usb-c it was an sd card and a usb-a in there and a 14 volt outlet yep nothing crazy all right we're in the back of the 2020 chevrolet blazer rs right now and it's pretty comfortable i have the seat here where i would normally sit well this is the passenger side so i think it matters but i still have plenty of room plenty of head room it's a pretty nice ride up here it's nothing crazy i am sitting higher than the driver and the passengers so i can see out the window in case they forget to see something or whatever but it's a pretty standard back seat nothing crazy we do have a USB C and USB A port plenty of power back here to charge the devices we also have a full house outlet back here 120 volt back here now i would not recommend plugging in a toaster or a microwave or anything like that it's only rated to about 150 watts most microwaves are like 800 to 900 watts so you'll blow everything in the car <laughs> don't worry about that we got storage pockets back here but they're really small really tight i don't know you gotta break them in or something and loosen them up a little bit but i'm not gonna i'm not gonna go there anyway <laughs> big speakers in the door nothing crazy oh also these are nice weather mats that's part of the sort of weather package you can buy. I can put that on the screen too. So you have these mats here and the ones in the front. They're much easier to clean than it's a standard carpet and stuff like that. But let's move on. We have the armrest right here with a cup holder. I mean, nothing crazy. This is a nice little road trip car, to be honest. I mean, I got my little my vents right here. I got my reading light and my OS word handle. I'm in good shape. All right, I'm coming from the grocery store. My hands are full. I have to open the trunk, but I can't use my hands because I can't reach the button down here. I can't reach in my pocket to press the trunk button twice. I can't go to the front door to press a little circle thing. So I'm gonna kick my foot right here, just to the left of this little blade. Boom, and hold it and step back. And the, while you're shaking your muscles and stuff, the trunk's gonna open for you and you can throw all your groceries in here. Now, you can either manually shut this thing or you can press the trunk button that's right here. I don't know if you can see it off camera, but it's a little trunk button, you can shut it there. Or you can kick your foot again, same spot, and a truck car will beep, let you know it's closing, and the tailgate will close. Woo! Inside the trunk is not very exciting or anything like that. You can get an optional cargo net to put here or a privacy net so people can't see in through the back or whatever. But how many Eric D. Weavers can we fit into the Chevrolet RS? I mean, plenty. I'm in here. I'm not even going to try to close the tailgate. My toolbox is in here. I can be my suitcase. I'm in here. It's cool. But you're wondering, how do you put the seats down, of course? Well, there's these two levers on either side. They look really obnoxious, to be honest. But you just pull the lever. Look, it looks like a, like a light cover or something. But you pull the lever, and that's all you got to do. It's a 40, 60 folding seat. And pull the other side here. Boom, there it goes. And to pull the seats back up, you do have to do it manually. We can try. Yeah, ain't going to happen. Got to do it manually. All right, guys, we're inside the 2020 Chevrolet Blazer RS. And at first, uh, my first thoughts as I'm in the car, it's actually pretty comfortable. Uh, the seat is a little on the harder side. It's not very soft. I guess it's just regular. It's medium. Nothing crazy. The brakes aren't that good. Now, this car does have 37,215 miles on it. I feel like that's a little high for a national rental car. I thought they got rid of them at 35, but maybe, maybe this one has slipped under the radar a couple times or whatever. The brakes could be getting old, but I don't know. A lot of people abuse these rental cars. Don't be gentle, it's a rental. I absolutely hate that phrase because someone is going to be buying this car after you, you know, and take care of it, man, like it's your own, whatever. But yes, good power. The steering wheel is a little on the thinner side um, than what I would like or whatever, but it's okay. Steering is pretty decent. It's not super loose. It's a little on the, it's kind of medium. Like, like I've mentioned before earlier in this video, this is like a Chevrolet Malibu or <laughs> I think it's a Chevrolet Malibu that has just been like, you know, stretched up a little bit, you know, everything is kind of like normal 
you know nothing is like super this or super that or poor this or poor that it's just kind of all what you need it to be and i do have three driving modes here i'm in normal right now let's go ahead and put it in dynamic and see if it makes any any difference at all if it wakes the car up or anything like that i doubt it um <laughs> but yeah it's it's a solid driving car it does everything that i needed to do it's it keeps me safe the blind spot monitoring is great it's bright it's like a nice little symbol off to the left or the right it's like a little crash symbol unlike my four doors where it's just like a little dot or whatever like that doesn't help me at all i'd rather see you know a freaking image right here in front of me but yes glides over bumps pretty decently it's a nice it's an suv or a cross or whatever you want to call it so we got some some curbs here on the highway i'm doing about 43 miles an hour car feels decent pretty planted to be honest i have confidence in the turn yep we got one right here let's see how it handles it stuff's getting slid all over there <laughs> getting on the highway at highway speeds yeah man <laughs> not bad we're rolling though it's a great cruiser very comfortable i feel confident Visibility is decent, except for just the, the headrest of the passenger seat obstructing my view out of the rear passenger side window. It's all good, it's all good. But yes, very comfortable, real chill. I can lay back, I can stretch my legs out, make them almost straight, and I'll hold the wheel down here at the bottom. Good cruiser. I mean, I, I don't have anything bad to really say about this car. It's just kind of normal. You know, it's a Chevrolet. Um, at being $45,000 though, maybe that would be one of the drawbacks. I mean, it was brand new. I'm sure you can get these all day at 30 grand, 33 grand, you know, a couple years out. Maybe I'll add that into the video somewhere. Cause this is a 2020, the 2022s and 2023 RSs are like 45, 47 grand. I'm pretty confident I can find one for like 35, probably with like 60,000 miles on it, but it's a Chevy. Should be able to fix it, no problem. But I want, like, like I said, I, I'm giving a good report. There's not much to say. I mean, 308 horsepower, not bad. Uh, I wish it was all wheel drive, standard. Like there's no need for it to be two wheel drive for any reason. I gotta find somewhere to punch it for you guys so I can show you the 060, but I'll do that later on. It's getting real dark out here. So I'm gonna go ahead. I'm actually headed to Super Dog right now. So stay tuned to that video. That's gonna be fun. I've never been there, but I've always wanted to go to get like a good, authentic Chicago hot dog. And Chicago hot dogs are way healthier than everybody else's because they put like tomatoes and pickles and stuff with like actual nutrients and vitamins in the hot dog. So I'm totally here for it. So yes, let's go to that and uh, we'll get back to you. All right, guys, that's my time with the 2020 Chevrolet Blazer RS. I did try to mix in some things with the new 2022, 2023 models or whatever, but I really like the Blazer. It's quick, it's nimble, it's not too big, it's not a Tahoe or Suburban. It's it's agile. It's it's. I think it's. I mean, for my purposes, I'm probably never going to off road. I would just get a Jeep. <laughs> I, will, I would rent one. You know, I, I off-roading is not my thing, you know, so I kind of understand, like, they, they could have took over the off-road market with, how many people in Broncos are off-road knows? Huh? How about your Land Cruisers, your Forerunners? How many people are off-roading those cars? They just want the capability to be able to do it. It's like buying a Bugatti, and it, it, can, it can do 260, 267, but when, but, but when are you going to do it? You ever done it? Nah. It's the same thing, you know? Who cares if it's not an off-road vehicle anymore? It, I think it's much better than what it used to be. You know, that B likes it. He's hanging out in the car. It's cool. I get, it's sporty. I like sports cars. It's me. I like agile, like racy stuff. I like to go fast. Can't go fast when you go off-road. You might die. But that's my opinion on the 2020 Chevrolet Blazer RS. I think it's cool. Now, I'm sure, I'm 100% sure that Chevy has heard you guys. And they're making off-road packages for these things. They're going to be able to lift them, put big tires on them, make the wheel wells bigger, give them more torque. The off-road's coming. It has to be. You can mark my words or not. I ain't betting you because I ain't that. I don't work for Chevy, so I don't know. But anyway, guys, your first time seeing my face, please go ahead and smash the subscribe button. 
like the video, browse the channel. You like food? Check out some of these playlists I got going on. You like shoes? Take those out too, man. I'm kind of mixing everything together. You know, just kind of make a little bit of this, a little bit of that. It's the hungry road. I eat, I drive, I walk. That makes sense? Restaurants, cars, shoes. There's never an empty tank, or empty stomach on this road, or empty cup. Take care, guys. Thank you. Oh, before I forget to mention, The Burning Boulevard. I'm dropping my first episode very soon. So The Burning Boulevard, from that is, if you ever heard of Hot Ones, it's my version of Hot Ones. I'm gonna be using the exact same sauces, very similar method, but with people I know. Maybe you might know them too. If you wanna get on The Burning Boulevard, if you got what it takes to do The Hot Ones Challenge with me, let me know. Slide me an email. If I'm gonna be in your area, we can set something up. I'll pay you in wine or a beer or something. Take care, man.